Item C. The second reading and consideration of Ordinance Number 2008-203 entitled An Ordinance Regulating and Restricting Noise Pollution in the City of Sac City, Iowa. And you've got copies of that and there's been ongoing discussion and this is the second reading. If there's no discussion or questions, I would call for a motion. Has there been any changes to the original draft? No. My question is, the day after this passes, the third reading goes into law, or whatever the process is, someone calls in and complains about the noise, the chief goes out and measures it, and it comes up at 69 decibels again in that area where it's commercial. What recourse does that person have? John, you want to answer that, but there is a fine, and there is no fine. No, no, no. That would be under the limit. Under the limit, okay. That would be under the limit. They have a civil action they could pursue. That would be nothing for the law, I do believe. Okay. And those decibel readings were gotten, gotten, were researched from various cities. They were taken from different towns. Adam just didn't come up with his number on them. And OSHA and all that. Well, the other side of it, too, is this ordinance also includes some discretion for the police officer to determine the regularity of the sound. There is some opportunity for him to see if it's a sound that's 69 decibels and it's continuous for 30 minutes. It's just like a lot of the other codes that you might have. It is subject to interpretation by the police officer. Just like, for instance, one of the things I was describing to one of the other council members is speeding violations. If you have a pregnant lady in the car on her way to the hospital, I don't think in most cases an officer, even though a strict violation is going over the speed limit, in most cases an officer is not going to write somebody a ticket for trying to get to the hospital to deliver a child. So there is some limitations to review a code ordinance based upon the conditions that apply for a particular case. How is the sound actually being generated? My understanding in discussions with them that the sound that they are complaining about, that they are currently complaining about, is the hammering of the sides, and you might know this better than we do, hammering on the sides of the bin to loosen corn that gets stuck in the system. Is that the stuff in the bagging room there? Over the bagging room or the scale room? No, this is an outside structure that's got basically bulk distillers, dry drains, and solubles. It's a byproduct in which we use from the ethanol industry. Is there moisture that sticks to the walls? And as it's cooler out, it's going to be cool and it's not going to stick as the summer. We're doing things today, we've been working on this for about six months I guess. We've done some modifications to our plants. We've done modifications of suppliers we bought the product from. If you know the ethanol industry at all today, quite a few have filed Chapter 11 and are no longer in business. So it's an alternative product that may be here today and may be gone tomorrow. I don't know what that will be. But we made, like I said, some equipment modifications to our facility. We went as far as trying to figure out what to do for noise reduction on basically a structure that enclosed the sound barrier. And as the weather changes and it's cool and crisp at night, its noise is going to travel farther than it would be on a cloudy rainy night. So we have done some extensive, we've got a decibel reader ourselves. We've been using it in conjunction with the police department to see where operating noise levels need to be. It's something we're continuing to work on all the way into the summer to see what we've done. We've had to make any changes. We're back to using one supplier today. We need to put ethanol plants that are open. So basically we're down to one supplier instead of three. That could change tomorrow. We have another ethanol plant that decides to close their doors. Our alternative supply would have to come from somewhere else. And there is no trading rules on this tour guide to drive trains with solubles. It's not like bean meal where you have claimable moisture levels or claimable 
no product consistency. It's, it is what it is. There has not been an established rule in the handling of that commodity, and I don't foresee that there will be one in the next year or two um, with being that new to the industry. So. I appreciate you being here to answer questions. Thank you. How frequently have the complaints been? Last month we received none. None? Yeah. the summer there was a few, wasn't it? Yeah, we'd go, you know, for a week, maybe get three, and then we'd go a couple weeks to get none, and I mean, it's, they were off and on. And I guess the tough thing for us is where the noise is generated from. I mean, we're in an industrial area where there's a concrete plant beside us, there's a metal fabrication shop there. I mean, we did do some noise level testings on our own from a third party. We ran it over a 24 or over a five day period, 24 hour readings. Um, the wind will affect the meters quite easily. I mean, John, mm -hmm. my tone of voice today in this room would probably read 62 to 64 decibels. To give you an idea of the level of sound, you can walk outside with a meter and the wind blowing, it could hit as high as 96. We've seen that on our readings. Are there any further questions or discussion? I'll call for a motion and a second to move it to the third reading. So moved. I'll, I'll second. I'll call for a vote. Councilor Hanson? Yes. Johnston? Yes. Muscat? Yes. Rennie? Yes. Frederick? Yes. Motion approved.